A pilot project on improving energy efficiency of residential buildings. Artik, Shirak region, Armenia. This building is in the mountainous town of Artik, a community located in the Shirak region, which is 1,780 meters above sea level and has a population of 18,000. The project involved construction, renovation, and insulation work, particularly the installation of doors and windows for building entrances, and the installation of windows, a lighting system, and 8 square meters of solar hot water panels for the stairwells. All of these improvements contribute to increasing the building's energy efficiency. This project aimed to demonstrate the possibility of achieving a significant increase in performance and energy efficiency in a multi-apartment building with relatively limited financial resources and the residents' active involvement. Aspirin IQ Technology Center, A Plus Energy Building, Vienna, Austria. Aspirin IQ is a technology center developed by the Vienna Business Agency. It will be Austria's first big plus energy building. That is, it will produce more energy than it will consume through the year. This concept is based on a wide range of measures. A passive house standard in construction, a compact structure, improved insulation, triple glazing, and automatic ventilation with heat recovery connection to district heating using energy from waste incineration, the use of geothermal energy for heating and cooling, photovoltaic elements on the south facade, micro wind energy elements above the entrance axis, thermal component activation, semi-air conditioning via source ventilation, green facades to improve the microclimate, and an automatic lighting system which reacts to people and to natural light conditions. The American Heart Institute building, a green hospital, Nicosia, Cyprus. The American Heart Institute building has been awarded several awards including the 2011 EU Green Building Award for its role as a high-performing, energy-saving building. This result derives from the extensive use of renewable sources of energy, geothermal heating, an advanced cooling system, and solar panels to cover its needs. All heating for the new building is provided by geothermal probes while cooling for the basic load is also covered by geothermal probes and complemented by conventional energy sources during peak demand. Due to its energy saving features, the energy consumption of the hospital complex was reduced by 55% or 350 megawatt hours per year. As a newly built green hospital, the building is designed to maximally utilize daylight, is highly insulated and has technical systems which include a 100 kilowatt photovoltaic plant, highly efficient lighting, and a central building management system, among other features. Reconstruction of the Hussite Church in Prague, Vinohrady, Prague, Czech Republic. The reconstruction of this monument of functionalist architecture is significant on several levels. It proves that such monuments can be energy efficient. It is culturally important as an extension of the life of functionalist architecture and thus preserves its message for future generations. It is socially important in that it not only maintains but, because of the reuse of space, fosters the current social function of property, benefiting the entire district of Vinohrady. The building has become much more energy efficient due to the use of procedures specifically suitable for the reconstruction of monuments. 
As a result of the reconstruction, the thermal resistance of walls was increased from 0.475 to 1.743 meters squared Kelvin per watt. Heating costs have fallen by 30% and harmful condensation was eliminated. Green Lighthouse, Copenhagen, Denmark. Green Lighthouse is the first carbon neutral public building in Denmark. The architecture is inspired by the sundial. The building has a cylindrical shape with a sloping roof cutting through it. The roof is covered with solar cells and solar panels and has skylights. In Green Lighthouse, each component was designed to save energy, from the actual design process to the choice of materials. Cooling takes place through natural ventilation and concrete floors that absorb heat. The building has heavily insulated walls, roof, and windows. The automatic Venetian blinds in front of the windows protect against sunlight during the summer and retain heat during the winter. A computer-controlled system monitors the building's energy consumption. The computer can power down the building and individual rooms when they are not occupied. The Pilka House, with an ecological wood construction and interesting architecture. Rovaniemi, Finland. The Pilka House is an office building for 135 people and home of the Pilka Science Center, which houses exhibits showing sustainable uses of northern forests. The carbon emissions of Pilka, which is made of wood, are only one-third of those of a steel or a concrete building of the same size. In combating climate change, the role of wood-based construction is more and more important. A wooden building is a permanent and valuable carbon sink. Pilka is an example of top expertise in ecological wood construction and a masterpiece of Finnish architecture. The Pilka office is a Finnish wood award winner for 2011. The Pilka House and Science Center have won several other awards. Ensemble of Nakulbakevi, Archaeological Site Center and Center for New Technologies, Tbilisi, Georgia. This ensemble shelters an archaeological site center and a center for new technologies. Commissioned as an energy efficient building, the concrete structure of the Center for New Technologies is filled with prefabricated wooden panels and wrapped in an insulating envelope, minimizing heating and cooling needs. Offices are located around small attics, which provide necessary daylight and at the same time work as natural ventilation shafts. Concrete floors collect thermal mass, similar to those in a passive solar house. A green roof is used to harvest and filter rainwater for use in the structure. The south-facing skylights of the archaeological site center provide daylight and at the same time work as natural ventilation outlets. A 1 kilowatt wind turbine covers the small electricity needs of the center. None of the buildings are connected to central water sewage systems. Used water from both buildings is treated on-site and used for irrigation. Efficiency House Plus with Electric Mobility, Berlin, Germany. The Efficiency House Plus with Electric Mobility is more than just a single-family home. It is a micro-power plant, resource depot, research project, platform for dialogue, and, last but not least, a contribution to improving the quality of the built environment. All the materials used are recyclable. The surplus energy generated by the building is fed into an in-house battery, 
and into electric vehicles, which act both as storage devices and electric loads. As a result, the property and its occupants will be self-sufficient and nearly independent of the public power grid. From the very first day, the project will be subject to close scientific monitoring. The research findings are to be made available to aid in the large-scale construction of similarly innovative building. Low Energy Straw Bale House, near Budapest, Hungary. The house has a wooden structure with straw bale exterior insulation covered with plaster on both sides for fire protection. It has triple glazed wood windows and meets passive house standards for heat loss. It doesn't use a recuperator. Fresh air enters the house via traditional filtration. The open corridor that runs around the house protects the inside from summer heat. Shading and excellent insulation provide a cool summer and a warm winter indoor climate. Rainwater is collected and used. Drinking water comes from a well. Wastewater is treated biologically. Electricity comes from the grid, but later a photovoltaic system will be installed. Most of the construction materials are local and natural and the construction was mainly done with manpower. The embodied energy content of the straw is 24.7 kilowatt hours per square meter, which is 10 times lower than bricks. The environmental impact of the house is low, and the house is sustainable, healthy, and affordable. The Jacob Blaustein Institutes for Desert Research Administration Building Negev Desert Highlands, Israel. This building integrates a number of climatic response strategies, including underground and earth-bermed construction, minimizing envelope exposure to the environment and providing thermal insulation, internal thermal mass for heat storage, and external thermal insulation to minimize heat loss, an internal sunken patio acting as a greenhouse during winter. Hot air from its apex is pumped into the north wing offices by 250 watt fans, providing the equivalent of 2,500 watt convectors, maintaining a rather stable indoor temperature of 19 to 23 degrees Celsius. Shading for the same patio in the summer by internal movable reflective shading meshes, while openable windows allow the passive ventilation and exhaust of hot air. Evaporative cooling through a downdraft tower, enabling the reduction of ambient air temperature by 12 to 25 degrees Celsius, maintaining an indoor temperature of 22 to 24 degrees Celsius on the lower patio level, and 23 to 26 degrees Celsius on the first floor. The evaporation of approximately one cubic meter of water per day provides a cooling capacity of 1,000 kilowatt hours per day. Khan Shatir Shopping and Entertainment Center, Astana, Kazakhstan. Key challenge for the engineers of this building was to prevent the formation of ice inside the envelope in wintertime when temperatures fall to minus 15 degrees Celsius. This is achieved by a combination of temperature control and the direction of warm air currents up the inner fabric surface, a strategy that also prevents downdrafts. In summer, temperatures reach 30 degrees Celsius, and fritting on the outermost foil layer provides solar shading. Inside, low-level jets direct cool air across the space, while vents at the apex induce stack-effect ventilation. An ethylene tetrafluoroethylene material was used, which, compared to glass, transmits more light, costs less, is self-cleaning, and is recyclable, while ensuring a comfortable microclimate throughout the year. Energy Efficient School, Ush, Kyrgyzstan. An 
integrated approach was applied during the development of this project with the use of progressive architectural and technological solutions, modern insulation materials, highly effective ventilation and lighting equipment, heat recovery from exhaust, as well as the use of solar energy for water heating, climate control systems, lighting, and heating. Technical solutions applied to the school design include efficient spatial planning of the building, minimal surface area for external and closing constructions, energy efficient insulation for the walls and roof, double glazing, the installment of heat recovery systems on the exhaust ventilation systems, a heating system regulated by indoor temperature sensors, the use of energy efficient lamps and regulated systems of lighting for the corridors, the use of translucent construction materials for the roof to provide lighting for gymnasiums, the use of solar thermal systems to provide hot water, the projected time to return on additional capital investments is 8.8 years. The estimated energy savings is 40% compared to standard schools. Renovation of multi-apartment building, Panavesis, Lithuania. This multi-apartment building, constructed in 1958, was renovated using the Jessica Financial Scheme in early 2012. A Jessica loan, with a time to maturity of up to 20 years at a fixed annual interest rate of 3%, is offered to the owners of apartments or other premises in multi-apartment buildings, provided they commit themselves to implement energy efficiency measures. The result is energy savings of 74%, from 349 to 90 kilowatt hours per square meter. Sun collectors produce 40% of the energy for the preparation of hot water. Modernization reduced not only energy consumption, but also reduced heating costs and improved the social and economic conditions and the health and quality of life of the household members. The Family House Adzik, Niksik, Montenegro. This house is made primarily of wooden bricks. Walls are made of 25 centimeter bricks, 8 centimeters of insulation, and a facade covering of coniferous timber on the substructure, which forms an air facade with an air layer of 5 centimeters. Windows and doors are glazed with triple low emission glass to be more energy efficient. The facility is heated by a system of heat pumps that uses water from a well with an average temperature of about 10 degrees Celsius. This is implemented through a system of wall heating and cooling where pipes through which hot and cold water flow are installed along the constructive walls plastered with thermal mortar thus having no visible fittings. Constructive walls made of solid brick are heat batteries and transmitters and lower the temperature in the summer. It is a very cost-efficient heating and cooling system, which uses a heat pump with six kilowatts of power in an area of 260 square meters and a volume of about 730 cubic meters. Housing Project in Bergen, Universal Design and Energy Efficiency, Bergen, Norway. The principles of universal design have been used throughout the planning of these four buildings and the surrounding outdoor areas. The project has 28 apartments which meet the passive house standard and 52 apartments which meet the low energy standard. In 2008, the project was one of the first of its kind in Norway. As of January 2012, about 1,100 apartments which meet the passive house standard have been either planned or constructed. The total energy used in passive house standard apartments in this project is 91 kilowatt hours per meter squared per year, and the amount of electricity used is 74 kilowatt hours per meter squared per year. 
solar thermal collector panels produce 17 kilowatt hours per meter squared per year. The buildings are constructed with a super insulated and airtight building envelope with minimized thermal bridges. The apartments have balanced ventilation systems with a heat recovery of 80% and low specific fan power. All passive house apartments have two thermal solar collectors on the roof that supply hot water. LNEG, National Laboratory for Energy and Geology. Solar Building 21, Lisbon, Portugal. This is a building with low energy consumption, which integrates solar and thermal renewable technologies and passive systems for heating and cooling. Appropriate construction techniques greatly contributed to thermal comfort inside the building. Insulation fully implemented from outside and glazing oriented to the south adequately protect the structure from the sun, thereby providing large solar gains in the winter and shading in summer. The introduction of passive cooling with a buried pipe system, together with natural ventilation strategies, is another innovative feature. However, its most remarkable characteristic is the use and inclusion of photovoltaic modules on the main facade to the south. These modules produce electricity, and the heat produced by them is recovered for heating the building in the winter. So far, about 80% of the building's energy consumption is from renewable sources. The building will, in the future, have net zero energy consumption. A self-heating eco-house for an ecological world of the future. Nemanovci, Serbia. The ecological self-heating house is fundamentally different from conventional houses, primarily due to a completely new concept of space heating, which involves increasing direct solar radiation and maximizing the utilization of energy. It is designed with a soil layer around the structure of the house instead of a roof and reflective surfaces installed around the window frames. This represents an innovative solar technology which is used to increase the amount of heat and light that enters the house. The house is energy efficient, with energy costs reduced by 85% for heating, 100% for cooling, 30% for lighting, and 10 to 20% for construction materials compared to conventionally constructed houses. The ecological self-heating house results in savings of more than 52,000 euros over a period of 40 years, basically paying itself off in that period of time. Low Energy Residential Building, Tverdosin, Slovakia. This is the first low energy public rental residential building in Slovakia. It consumed only 39.6 kilowatt hours per meter squared per years of energy for heating from 2011 to 2012. An external 200 millimeter monolithic concrete wall was insulated with a contact thermal insulation system based on gray polystyrene with a thickness of 270 millimeters. Balconies have steel profiles fastened to concrete walls with steel anchors with intermittent heat bridges. In the roof space, mineral wool was used for thermal insulation. To improve the energy balance of the low energy house, 10 solar panels with 17.8 square meter absorbing surfaces were placed on the roof, creating thermal energy for the heating system and hot water. Due to its reduced energy consumption, the building is affordable for low-income groups because it reduces energy costs from heating and hot water. The house is environmentally friendly and has low CO2 emissions. Sustainable Building, Geneva Region, Switzerland. Balance is a housing cooperative which, in 2010, 
has developed a sustainable building in the Geneva region. Dry toilets were installed in all 13 apartments of this building. This was the first project of this type in Switzerland. Tanks located in the basement of the building contain waste together with wood chips that are added by the tenants. The compost is removed once or twice per year and then matured for an additional year before being used as fertilizer. More information about the project can be found at www.cooperative-equilibre.ch The highest building in the Republic of Tajikistan, the 22-story business center Dushanbe Plaza, Tajikistan. The business center Dushanbe Plaza was commissioned on 6 September 2011. The total area of the Dushanbe Plaza is about 40,000 square meters. The building is 92 meters high and consists of 20 so-called active floors and two technical floors. Dushanbe Plaza is an ultra-modern complex and one of the best A-class office centers in Dushanbe. It meets all the construction and spatial planning requirements of sustainability. The building is an example of modern architecture, which is blended into the existing constructions in the city center of the Tajik capital. Building in Reconstruction at Nikola Tesla Street, Municipality of Karpash. The former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. The municipality of Karpash is one of the municipalities to have most successfully implemented measures to increase energy efficiency in the residential sector. It has several sustainable projects for the construction of new buildings and the renovation of existing structures, including a building at Nikola Tesla Street No. 2, which was built between 1960 and 1970. The project's aim was to entirely replace all of the windows and balcony doors with substitutes with double glazing and to apply a thermal facade with 10 centimeter thick polystyrene. The panels of expanded polystyrene have excellent thermal insulation and mechanical properties and are affordable and simple to install, making them a leader in insulation materials to date. The implementation of this program for energy efficiency has contributed to reduced heating and electricity expenditures by around 35%. New Town Hall Kusuk Sekmesi Municipality, Turkey. The new town hall in the municipality of Kusuk Sekmesi is designed to be a green building. The following sustainable elements will be incorporated into the architecture and the functions of the building. A high percentage of passive air conditioning, natural lighting through the double facades and galleries, the possibility to reuse rainwater, the use of recyclable materials, and a green roof with adaptable plants. For example, the material used for the surrounding curvilinear facade is glass and almost all the floors get sunlight in the daytime. This project will be the first BREEAM certified public building in Turkey, providing maximum comfort, safety, and environmental benefits for the people who work there. Sanderstead Road, Croydon, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. This new housing development is set on a derelict brownfield site, a little under half a hectare in size, on Sanderstead Road in the London borough of Croydon. The development used a highly insulated and responsibly procured timber frame, resulting in good thermal performance and an environmentally sound construction. 
surface water runoff was managed on site using sustainable drainage techniques. The thermally efficient, highly insulated timber frame construction in conjunction with 100% energy efficient lighting and natural gas condensing boilers will ensure reduced heating and running costs for the social housing tenants. The use of photovoltaic panels to serve the communal spaces whilst meeting the renewable energy targets for the development will also offer reduced running costs for the landlord. Residential Complex Comfort Town, Dnipro District. Ukraine Comfort Town is located in the Dnipro District of the Ukraine capital. A combination of the best traditional and innovative technologies have been used to create Comfort Town. A priority of the project was to meet the needs of the people living in a modern city while complying with European standards and achieving a high quality of life. The complex offers a large amount of green space, including parks and walking and recreational areas. The interiors of the apartments have been optimized to create a comfortable living space and, at the same time, to avoid unnecessary non-functional areas, resulting in lower housing costs. The High Line, New York City, United States of America. New York City's High Line is a unique public park that takes the ideas of reuse and sustainability to a higher level. Built upon a historic elevated rail bed, the High Line brings nature into public spaces as it snakes a 2.4 kilometer long trail, 9 meters above Manhattan's west side. The High Line's design uses the same technology as a green roof. The High Line's multi-layer living roof system is set atop the rail line's waterproofed, concrete structure and provides such benefits as a reduction of storm water runoff by up to 80%, a mediation of the heat island effect created by hard, reflective city surfaces, and plantings that create shade, oxygen, and habitat for insects and birds. A pathway system of open-jointed concrete planks decreases both storm water runoff and the amount of water needed for the plants. Life cycle costs influence the selection of all materials used in the High Line landscape, lessening the need to replace and dispose of materials after a short time. Palais des Nations, a common heritage of the international community. The United Nations office at Geneva, or UNAG, is housed in the Palais des Nations, an outstanding testimony to 20th century architecture, situated in a beautiful park in Geneva, overlooking Lake Geneva. Building management practices follow the policies of the Secretary General to protect the environment and fight global warming. For instance, UNOG buildings are part of the Genève Lac Nation project. This project aims to use water from the lake to cool the Palais des Nations and its conference rooms. UNOG has installed 60 square meters of solar panels for the production of hot water in its buildings. Energy efficient lighting and motion sensors have been installed throughout the Palais. The replacement of pipes and flushing units has helped to reduce water consumption. The heating oil, previously used to heat the Palais, has been replaced with natural gas, which has led to reductions in CO2 emissions. <laughs>